The bombs with a shower of grenades fell on a former institute and on houses and streets surrounding it. Welcome to McBurdo's expedition into the unknown and terrible. We have been stuck here in the ice for an eternity. Come into the captain's cabin and warm yourself before you head back out onto the decks. Welcome to my cabin. How long have we been trapped in this infernal ice pack? Or in the summer, tropical estuary. Writers can embellish on a story that they've heard, but hearing the words of someone who actually witnessed an event, sometimes shocking, always amazing. I have not read this before, so we're going to experience it together. I'm going to break in with my opinions. Chances are, as you are a crew member of the HMS Miser, you are not easily upset by the dark and terrible. I will warn you now that these may not have the most politically acceptable ideas or language because they come from the past and things were different then. So art history is one of my side interests and I recently had to write a paper on Pablo Picasso's Guernica. Cubism and Picasso in particular are not my favorites. It just doesn't ring my bell. But there is something about his painting of the bombing of Guernica that the more you look at it and you imagine how big it actually was, because when you see it, you know, on your computer screen, or even if you put it up on a big TV, you might think, oh, well, yeah, it's impactful, but it's, it's huge. The painting is massive. And because of my work studying the Luftwaffe, I know quite a bit about the bombing of Guernica. I was inspired to look into my many, many, many primary sources to find something. I think he's going to be a massive snow leopard because when you look at this little fellow, he is 13 weeks old. Yes, you are, aren't you? Yes, you are. You're 13 weeks old and he's huge. He's huge. He's massive. Definitely way bigger than Niblet was when he was just a little, a little kitten. So he's gonna be our massive snow leopard. Oh, and off he goes. No Guernica for him. It's probably a little scary for his delicate King of the Snows ears. Even though he is clearly a Viking, but I have digressed massively. So this is an article by George Steer of the Times, and it's a report from 1937. It's quite quite something. This is from uh, the Times of London. Bilbao, April 27th, 1937. Guernica, the most ancient town of the Basques and the center of their cultural tradition, was completely destroyed yesterday afternoon by insurgent air raiders. AKA, <laughs> Germans. Those would be the insurgents. It was the Luftwaffe testing out their brand new Stukas. The bombardment of this open town far behind the lines occupied precisely three hours and a quarter during which the powerful fleet of airplanes consisting of three German types, Junkers and Henkel bombers and Henkel fighters did not cease unloading on the town bombs weighing from a thousand pounds downward and as calculated more than 3,000 two-pounder aluminum incendiary projectiles. The fighters meanwhile plunged low from above in the center of the town to machine gun those of the civilian population who had taken refuge in the field. What did you do? Not on. We're in the midst of the Ukraine-Russia war. Russia-Ukraine war. Which one shows more innocence on one side than the other? Uh, and I'm feeling very, very upset by war crimes at the moment. I'm a little sensitive to it. The whole of Guernica was soon in flames except the historic Casa de Yontes with its rich archives of the Basque race, where the ancient Basque parliament used to sit. The famous Oak of Guernica, 
the dried out old stump of 600 years and the new shoots of this century was also untouched. I was supposed to go to Guernica in 2020 and I'm bitter, I'm really bitter. I'm supposed to do the Camino again and I'm hoping to do it next year and I'm gonna go through Guernica because like, I'm the death tourist. Here the kings of Spain used to take the oath to respect the democratic rights, feros, of the... Vizcaya? Vicaya? And in return received a promise of allegiance as a suzerain of the democratic title of Senor, not Rey of Vizcaya. The noble parish church of Santa Maria was also undamaged except for the beautiful chapter house which was struck by an incendiary bomb. At 2 a.m. today I visited the town and the whole of it was a horrible sight. I think that would make it even worse. Like, I'm gonna go to a place that was recently bombed and firebombed. And I'm gonna go at 2 in the morning because, yeah. It's a good time. When I visited the town, the whole of it was a horrible sight, flaming from end to end. The reflection of the flames could be seen in the clouds of smoke above the mountains from 10 miles away. Throughout the night, houses were falling into the streets, became long heaps of red, impenetrable debris. Many of the civilian survivors took the long trek from Guernica to Bilbao in antique, solid-wheeled Basque farm carts drawn by oxen. Carts piled high with such household possessions as could be saved from the conflagration clogged the roads all night. Other survivors were evacuated in government lorries, but many were forced to remain round the burning town lying on mattresses or looking for lost relatives and children, while units of the fire brigades and the Basque motorized police under the personal direction of the Minister of the Interior Senor Monzon and his wife continued rescue work until dawn. If I had read this three months ago, it wouldn't have felt quite so present. But uh, I was just looking at the pictures of Mariupol and <clears throat> church bell alarm. In the form of its execution and the scale of the destruction it wrought, no less than in the selection of its objective, the raid on Guernica is unparalleled in military history. That is actually very true. They wanted to see what a Stuka could do. That was really, that was, that was the deal. The Condor Legion we had this plane and they thought it worked really well. I have a good story about the Stuka. I'm a nerd. <laughs> okay, leave me be. It's the one that screamed. Because it was a dive bomber, but it had this big foil that would actually make that screaming noise. And there's a story about Ernst Dudet who, he was a World War I and World War II German pilot, first major hero and then general. Uh, he ended up taking his own life. He, he had a big, big drinking problem. And he was, between the wars, Germany's premier test pilot and development pilot. Oh, I will do a, an episode on Udet. They had two Stukas and he was testing them for Hermann Goering. And he was really drunk when he showed up. And he got into the Stuka and he was flying along the first one and he did the dive bomb and he couldn't pull out of the, the bombing run. And he crashed it, totally destroyed it. And everybody was like, oh my God, who dead is dead. And he crawled out and he was okay. He got into the second one and did what he was supposed to do perfectly. I guess crashing had sobered him up. Guernica was not a military objective. Now, for them to say that there hadn't been attacks on non-military targets before, uh, there hadn't been air attacks on non-military targets before. World War I had its fair share of non-military action, as did the Franco-Prussian War, as did the Crimean War, but we're allowed to have a little hyperbole. And I'm digressing a lot, so let me get back on track. A factory producing war material lay outside the town and was untouched. So were two barracks some distance from town. The town lay far behind the lines. The object of the bombardment was seemingly the demoralization of the civil population and the destruction of the cradle of the Basque race. Every fact bears out this appreciation beginning with the day the deed was done. Monday was the customary market day in Guernica for the country round. When the market it was full and peasants were still coming in, the church bell rang the alarm for approaching airplanes and the population sought refuge in cellars and in the dugouts prepared following the bombing of the civilian population of Durango on March 31st, which opened General Mola's offensive in the north. 
So that was March 31st. This is nearly a month later. The people are said to have shown a good spirit. A Catholic priest took charge and perfect order was maintained. Five minutes later, a single German bomber appeared, circled over the town at a low altitude, then dropped six heavy bombs, apparently aiming for the station. The bombs with a shower of grenades fell on a former institute and on houses and streets surrounding it. The aeroplane then went away. In another five minutes came a second bomber which threw the same number of bombs into the middle of town. About a quarter of an hour later, three Junkers arrived to continue the work of demolition, and thenceforward the bombing grew in intensity and was continuous, only ceasing with the approach of dusk at 7.45. The whole town of 7,000 inhabitants plus 3,000 refugees was slowly and systematically pounded to pieces. Over a radius of five miles round, a detail of the raider's technique was to bomb separate caserios or farmhouses. In the night, these burned like little candles in the hills. All the villages around were bombed with the same intensity of the town itself, and at Mujica, a little group of houses at the head of the Guernica Inlet, the population was machine gunned for 15 minutes. I actually, I do know that some members of the Condor Legion, I guess today we'd say they had PTSD, they were really traumatized and they got really big medals to make them not be so horrified or upset uh, by what they'd done. Because we tend to think of these pilots as having been maybe World War I pilots, but they actually weren't. These were really young guys in the new 1936 Luftwaffe. Many of them were deeply troubled because they had to go bomb the town, go back, reload, take off, go bomb, go back, reload. So it was circular because they actually didn't have that many planes there. I mean, they make this sound like there were many, 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 but when they're talking about how the, you know, one came and then a couple more came, it's because they were doing this circular. Werner Mölders was one of the leaders of the Condor Legion and he actually died going to Ernst Dudet's funeral. And he was quite troubled. Rhythm of death. It is impossible to state yet the number of victims. In the Bilbao press this morning, they were reported as fortunately small, but it is feared that this was an understatement in order not to alarm the large refugee population of Bilbao. In the hospital Posefinas, which is one of the first places bombed, all of the 42 wounded militiamen it sheltered were killed outright. In a street leading downhill from the Casa de Juntas, I saw a place where 50 people, nearly all women and children, were said to have been trapped in an air raid refuge under a mass of burning wreckage. Many were killed in the fields, and altogether the deaths may run into the hundreds. An elderly priest named Aaron Tigui was killed by a bomb while rescuing children from a burning house. The tactics of the bombers, which may be of interest to students of the new military science, were as follows. It's kind of funny to hear of it being called the new military science, but yeah. This is true. First, small parties of airplanes threw heavy bombs and hand grenades all over the town. The hand grenades just seems random, like... And, and that really shows the... We're coming into the new technology of World War II, but we're still in that World War I. Yes, we just took the bomb off our lap and threw it out the plane. But I mean, like today, the idea of, you know, someone in an F-18 or whatever F they're at now, I don't do modern warfare, you know, like, oh yeah. And then I pulled out my machine gun and was like, <laughs> like they're throwing grenades out the plane. Choosing area after area in orderly fashion. Next came fighting machines which swooped low to machine gun those who ran in panic from dugouts, some of which had already been penetrated by thousand pound bombs, which make a hole 25 feet deep. Many of these people were killed as they ran. A large herd of sheep being brought into the market was also wiped out. The object of this move was apparently to drive the population underground again, for next as many as 12 bombers appeared at times dropping heavy and incendiary bombs upon the ruins. The rhythm of this bombing in an open town was, therefore, a logical one. First, hand grenades and heavy bombs to stampede the population, then machine gunning to drive them below, next heavy and incendiary bombs to wreck the houses and burn them on top of their victims. I can't do this anymore, man. My head's about to explode. It's awful. It's just 
awful. The only countermeasures the Basques could employ, for they do not possess sufficient aeroplanes to face the insurgent fleet, were those provided by the heroism of the Basque clergy. They blessed and prayed for the kneeling crowds, socialists, anarchists, and communists, as well as the declared faithful in the crumbling dugouts. When I entered Guernica after midnight, houses were crashing on either side, and it was utterly impossible even for firemen to enter the center of the town. It is. It just makes me think of Mariupol. The hospitals of Josefinus and Convento de Santa Clara were glowing heaps of embers. All the churches except that of the Santa Maria were destroyed, and the few houses which still stood were doomed. When I revisited Guernica this afternoon, most of the town was still burning and new fires had broken out. About 30 dead were laid out in a ruined hospital. A call to Basques. It's interesting that, I mean, they're not obscure about the fact that these were Germans, but they're also kind of not, um, they're not saying it exactly either. The Condor Legion sent by Hitler to help Franco. I mean, they've not even mentioned Franco. Maybe I'm just talking about this from the perspective of someone who's looking at it 90 years later. But I mean, when you read articles about Ukraine, it's all like, Putin, Putin, Putin! Putin? Putin? So it surprises me that they're not being a more Franco did this with the help of the German. The effect here of the bombardment of Guernica, the Basque holy city, has been profound and has led President Aguirre to issue the following statement in this morning's Basque press. The German airmen in the service of the Spanish rebels have bombarded Guernica, burning the historic town which is held in such veneration by all Basques. They have sought to wound us in the most sensitive of our patriotic sentiments, once more making it entirely clear what Iscadis may expect of those who do not hesitate to destroy us down to the very sanctuary which records the centuries of our liberty and democracy. Before this outrage, all we Basques must react with violence, swearing from the bottom of our hearts to defend the principles of our people with unheard of stubbornness and heroism if the case requires it. We cannot hide the gravity of the moment, but victory can never be won by the invader if, raising our spirits to the heights of strength and determination, we steel ourselves to his defeat. The enemy has advanced in many parts elsewhere to be driven out of them afterwards. I do not hesitate to affirm that here the same thing will happen. May today's outrage be one spur more to do it with all speed. And there we go. It's actually still on the Sunday Times. They reposted this April 26th. I think that they are re-releasing or, you know, occasionally printing some of their old stories because the, the New York Times does the same thing. You know, it's it's interesting because I've I've read quite a bit about Guernica in reading about the Luftwaffe and so I've always read about it from that perspective. It's just so tragic. And it was absolutely a war crime. Chair. <laughs> Serious thing. 